Welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first time home buyer, seasoned investor, even a renter, this next 30 minutes is designed just for you. Think about hitting multiple open houses all from your living room, but with my attorney advice throughout the way. Any questions whatsoever during the show, I have people standing by to answer them. All you have to do is call the phone number on the screen, 407 205 04 Zero, zero. This is a cannot miss program today. I promise you stick around. It's going to be a fantastic show. But first, it's time for the opening statement. The opening statement today is brought to you by my very good friends at IQ Power Solar. As you know, I went solar last year. I'm saving about $400 per month on my electricity bill. Also, I saved money over $10,000 when I filed my taxes last year as well. One of the best financial decisions I've ever made was going solar. Stephen Bader, tell us how you did it. Right now is the craziest time in real estate in your lifetime. I know, sounds a little bit crazy to think about, right? But I assure you, it's the craziest time in at least Florida real estate in your entire lifetime. I don't care how old you are. It's crazier than 2006. 2006, it was a pulse and a pen. You get a mortgage by a million dollar house, even if you're making eight bucks an hour. Crazier than in 2008 when the market absolutely collapsed and we dealt with a foreclosure crisis. I think that you need this show and I think you need a great real estate agent in your life right now more than you ever have needed a great agent. Because the decision always is right now, guys. It's do I buy? When do I buy? Do I sell? When do I sell? What do I list it for? Do I hold? Do I do nothing? These are very difficult questions that are very hard to answer right now in this current real estate climate. We're in a pandemic, I understand that, but the market is incredibly hot. We have people coming in from all over the country and really all over the world into Central Florida. The question is, the question of the day today, do I buy, do I sell, do I hold? We're gonna answer that question by asking real questions. Every Saturday here and You Have Real Estate, we ask real questions to the trend-setting people in Central Florida's real estate community. Return guests today, I'm happy to have them. Dallas Lehman is here from You Have Mortgage. Hello, Dallas, how are you, sir? Great to be back, thanks, Justin. And Shane Croft, realtor to the stars. <laughs> down in the Dr. Phillips Windermere area. Shane, welcome back. How are you? So good. Glad to be here. Well, let me start with you, Shane, because many times on this program over the last, what, two years now, I've said, look, if your house is worth 400 grand, your realtor comes in and tells you it's worth 400 grand, don't say, you know what, let's start at 450. Because the risk always has been in the past that, okay, it's going to sit on the market for six months, nine months, and it's going to get stale and people are going to say something's wrong with that house. They listed it too high. Shane, we're seeing people make above asking offers within not even days, hours right now. How in the world do you determine how much to list my house for? It's probably the most difficult decision you have to make right now. This is the toughest market I've ever worked in. Now that seems a little counterintuitive, right? Put a sign in the yard, it sells. It's just not that way, meaning you know, the first piece is, what do I list a home for? Uh, you know, we tend to work more higher end, and let's just say that the most recent closings show this home is a comp of $1 million, mm -hmm. right? There's numerous closings. And they say, okay, well, let's list it at 1.2. So here we go. So now we have a problem. And the problems include primarily appraisal issue right out of the gate if someone's willing to pay that, okay? Because right now, values... Sales prices are not being chose based on facts. It's mm. based on emotion, mm. and buyers are bidding the same way. So there's a good chance you get a bid at 1.2. So here we go. And if they're financing, we're absolutely going to have an appraisal issue. And you can get appraisal waivers signed as part of the contract, yet almost everyone still tries to renegotiate when that appraisal comes in at $1 million. Uh, a bigger issue that people don't really understand or inspections, and the reason is buyers think, wow, I'm paying this huge premium. Therefore, this house needs to be mm. in perfect condition. Mm -hmm. Home inspection is done, comes back normal. Every home has issues. And suddenly, they want to renegotiate the entire deal. They kind of have some buyer's remorse. So it's very difficult to navigate. How are we overcoming this appraisal issue? Let me explain the appraisal issue that, that Shane's talking about. So if your house sell, if you're selling your house, uh, you get an offer for a million dollars. 
the person who's buying it likely is getting a mortgage, although sometimes they'll pay cash. And if they're paying cash, this is not an issue. But if they're getting a mortgage and then the appraiser for the mortgage company comes out and says, this house is only worth nine fifty in a market that's skyrocketing very quickly, that is happening. So what do I do in that situation when, I, when I'm going to buy or, or sell my house? and the offer's a million bucks, the appraisal comes in at 900000 what are our options then? Yeah, you had a couple. One is, uh, let's just assume you did not have an appraisal waiver contingency in the deal. Okay, just it was a traditional mm-hmm. financing transaction. So appraisal comes in 100000 low, the buyer comes back and says, reduce it 100000 Seller can say, no, meet you in the middle, or yes. It's hairy. Most of them... If it's late in the transaction, it's meet in the middle. Yeah. But it's ugly. A lot of emotions flying at that point. I agree. And, you know, the appraisal is always ordered by the mortgage company, and that's where you come in, Dallas. And I have a feeling you and I might argue today because I made a prediction on this show last week because you weren't here for the first time in a while. I made a prediction about rates, and, it, and it's something that I don't know why I've been feeling lately. I don't know if it's the volatility. I don't know if it's politics. We've, been, we've had these record low rates. I think we've seen people get 2% interest rates on mortgages, which Absolutely. is yeah. unheard of. Sure. I have this weird feeling because we're seeing all these national news stories about this market is crazy. We're, I saw one article where they had 72 offers on the same house. Where, right. So when anything becomes national news, I start to think something's going to change. And I have this weird sinking suspicion that the federal government's going to go in and get these rates hiked up. I'm guessing... Five percent by the end of the year, and this is where I think you and I fight. Probably, what do you think is going to happen with these rates o- over the next, at least from now till the end of the year? Well, it's it's probably somewhere in the middle of that statement. I agree with you. We may differ. I'll, I'll <laughs> go with what I know, okay. and I I really I like your opinion. There's a lot of truth in what you're saying. They are going to go up, and they have been going up. But before we even go down that road, I'm going to ring the bell two ways and say number one, it's not time to panic. Rates are going to remain low. They still are low, and I'll get back to that in a second. But what I want to talk about being low is it's subjective. We've talked about the Fed. They spoke, and I think it was about four and a half to five weeks ago, and they said we are committed to keeping them low. So when the Fed speaks, that's subjective. Low to me, if I write a loan today on a 30-year fix, might be 2.875 or as high as three and an eighth. But the subjectivity of the Fed might be low to them, might be 5%, might be 35 might be 4 so we don't know. But they're committed to doing that. Um, you know, are we going to get to 5 by year end? Um, I think there's some truth in what you're saying, but I'm not going to put a number on it. They are rising just a little bit, but I'll tell you what. All the first-time home buyers out there that I'm working with, all the people that have never bought a home, this still is a great time. I don't care if last month it was 2875 or next month it's 35 Shane, you'll bear this out. We're in the same business of working with these people. Where could you ever get even three and a half and be virtually the, the most amazing low it could possibly be right I'll, now? I'll speak to that. I, yeah. I started Please out do. in your business. Oh, okay. I was a mortgage banker in the 90s. There you go. 1994. The mm-hmm. first loan I originated and closed, yeah. rate was 10 and an eight. There you go. <laughs> and, and, and your borrower was thrilled. 10 and an eight. And I remember when rates, you know, a year or two later, I don't remember how long, when it was five point something, we could not believe it. Exactly. We were right. like, it's this is the greatest of all time. Yeah. Right. And now people hear three and a half and get upset. Yeah. Exactly. So rates, I don't I, I don't let that play right now. Anything under four percent, it's insane. You're absolutely right. And I'm I'm gonna say one more thing on yeah, that please. subject because I bought my first home in nineteen ninety one and I got eleven and a eleven and a quarter percent. And that was a perfect credit score, job, tons of money. I was a Fannie Mae dream, perfect. I bought it down to 9.25 and said, this is the best rate I'll ever get, 1991. So, yes, Shane, I didn't know that, but that's great information. Even if we get to five, even if we get there, we're still going to be fine. But um, I'm not going to disagree with you on that front. But what I am going to say is they are continuing to be low, and they will be low for the rest of this year. Help me understand. Help all of us understand something, because we always hear that these rates have been artificially low, kind of determined by the federal government in some ways. Who does determine these rates? How how does someone say this is you're going to get a three point five or three point eight? We understand credit and all that sort of thing, but it's based on something and it seems to be based on something from the federal government. What is that? There's there are many factors, actually, but let's bring it down to the least common, the base. Uh, I would say the easiest way to understand it is the Fed will set a rate at a certain rate. Then the 
The rate is then picked up by the banks on what they want to charge, the mortgage brokers, the lenders. There's many different arms of lending out there. So it's almost starting at a rate the Fed sets, and then you can tack that on to whichever institution you're in, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still dictated by the market. I mean, what will the market bear? There's the 10-year Treasury. I mean, we can go into so many things that affect that, the economy. Um, one of the most amazing things that people don't understand, and I think this is a very good point, one of the things is called a ripple effect that will affect interest rates al almost quicker than just about anything is if there's a natural disaster, a war, something that the economy is not planned for. Um, that can have an immediate effect on interest rates. What do you see? I mean, so that's kind of our prediction on the rates. What do you think real estate market-wise in this market, Shane, where it's it's gone up substantially, no, no question about it, as we sit here in uh, mid-April, basically, what do you see happening with uh, values over the next rest of the year, at least? Yeah, I've been banging this drum. I, th I think <laughs> we've entered a new era in Florida. Lots of people coming, almost no one leaving. Everyone knows I've learned to work remotely. Why would I pay state income taxes yeah. somewhere? You know, very simple. Everyone mm -hmm. understands that. So I'm not a Pollyanna realtor. I don't think values always go up. 2006, I sent a letter to everyone I knew and said, housing is about to crash. If you own property, you better sell it. Yep. Right? People thought I was insane. Right? <laughs> the market was still just going straight vertical. Yeah. Yep. The rest is history. What I think Florida has entered into now is sort of the same golden era boom that California saw in the 70s and 80s. And I think if we look over time, let's call it decade or two, mm -hmm. it's going to be this. Now, is it going to go up and down along? Of course. But I think over time, we are moving into an era we have never seen. And I think California is the only place that's really seen what we're about to experience. So it sounds like you're still somewhat bullish on at least real estate in, in Florida over the next decade. Yeah, over the next decade, 100%. Yep. Do I know what's going to happen six months from now? No, that's the more volatile mm -hmm. piece. But if you're a long-term holder, if you're gonna, this is your, you're going to live here for the next 10 years, you're going to hold as investment property, whatever, it's a buy. And I've been saying this for a while here, too. I, I don't think we're going to have a 2008, 9, 10 crash because we've been way more safe with how we've lent money over the last 10 to 15 years. We're not going to have a crash. We're not going to have a foreclosure crisis, in my view. Are we going to have foreclosures? Yes, because people are not paying their mortgage right now uh, because they're on these moratoriums and things. So I, I do think there will be an uptick in foreclosure. I don't think it's going to be anything like what happened in 2008. And... I remain bullish on this market. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Justin, you're an idiot because the, the values have gone up so much. The prices have gone up so much. It's a terrible time to buy. Maybe yes on an investment property, maybe. But if you're buying your primary home right now, when you can still get a rate at three or three and a half percent, even if you're overpaying a little bit, if you plan on staying at this house for a few years, look at your monthly payment. You're still going to be in good shape, even if the market corrects itself a little bit and you don't have a ton of equity, I think you're going to be in great shape based on that payment, based on the fact that even if you can't sell it a year from now or two years from now, if you decide to move, you'll be able to rent it and cover that nut. I'm bullish on this market. I love the lack of state income tax here. The property taxes, even though we have no state income taxes, the property taxes in Florida are somewhere right in the middle. Yeah. And if you look at the house values or the, pr the median price to buy a house nationwide, Florida's right in the middle. We're not even close to the top. So I'm still bullish on this market here in Florida. Yeah, couldn't agree more. You know, right now, over the last few years, not just during this run up, you know, we've seen about a third of buyers paying cash, a third putting 25% down or more, and then a third more agency financing, yeah. 5, 10, 15%. So, you know, if you've paid cash for your home and the market corrects 10%, right. you don't care. It doesn't impact your life whatsoever. Exactly. So that's why we can ride out any, you know, there's some lag in foreclosures right now. But there's also such a demand that if that inventory comes to market, we'll be completely scooped up. We even have institutions now moving back into the market. My brother just went to work for a big company, and they've taken institutional capital, and they're doing buy and tenure holds on rental properties. Right. So those foreclosures that you might mention, yeah. they're going to be just absorbed as quick as they come. Uh, yeah, to totally, totally agree. And by the way, if you're thinking about buying a house or selling a house, especially if you're thinking about buying one, call Dallas Lehman now because you're going to need to get that pre-qualification letter. That No one's going to really show you houses until you get that. And, and by the way, you want to make sure you qualify before you, you take the family out and get them all excited because there's nothing worse getting, than getting your wife excited about buying a house and then you come home and say, 
by the way, sweetheart, we, we can't get it. Don't do that to yourself, <laughs> please. I, I've been in that boat before. Oh, yeah. Get pre-qualified first with Dallas, 407-205-0400. But if you want to go see a house or you want to figure out what your house is worth, Shane Croft at that very same phone number would be happy to tell you what your house is worth. He'll give you an honest opinion of what you could sell your house for right now. And Shane, that leads me to the next question. And it's a question a lot of people have been asking, Justin, this market's hot. I want to sell my house, but then I can't go buy anything else or I'm paying top dollar to buy something else sure. anyway. I have nowhere to go. What, how does that conversation go with someone who's thinking about selling because the market's so great, but then they got to figure out where to live after that? Yeah, we probably have 20 clients right now that are in that, you know, I want to sell, but I have nowhere to go. Now, I tell people, if you're downsizing, do it now Yeah. because you're going to get what's potentially the largest premium ever. On a large home, you're going down, right? Yeah, sure. Now, if you're upsizing, it's a little more challenging. Mm -hmm. yep. So we're having that conversation every single day. In my community, Keens Point, where I live in Windermere, there are 1,068 homes. Historically, there's an average of 85 to 100 homes on the market at all times. This morning, there were 13. Wow. wow. Way down. It's amazing. It, it's like saying zero, to be honest. Sure. It's like okay. zero. What does it take now, Dow? Just so I know, let's say I'm a renter right now, and I do want to buy. I love the fact that the rates are great. I understand market's a little bit up, but I, I'm listening to Justin Clark, and I know it's a great time to buy still. How do I know if I can qualify? I mean, what do I really need, like credit score-wise or cash in the bank? How do I know if I'm going to qualify? Very simple. I mean, for, to get pre-approved, simply call me. I'll go through it. But the, the, mo the most important thing is what's your down payment, what's your credit score, what do you have in reserve, and what are, what's your employment? Those four factors combined, it's a very quick process to put that in line. Um, once you determine how much money that you're able to put down, you know, 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%, 20%, then that opens up other doors too. But it's it's a fairly easy process. Mm -hmm. And I've got to tell you, a lot of people right now don't realize they are able to buy. And the reason I say that is, if you look at the mechanics of the pre-approval or getting a loan, with that low interest rate, that brings their debt to income yeah. ratios way down. So they can actually afford to buy now. Simple math. If you have an interest rate of 2.5%, versus 7%, you may not have been able to buy at 7% because your gross monthly income divided by debt doesn't work out for you. Exactly. Right now, it's much easier for them to get a home. Absolutely. And we've, we've always said that these two, three, four hundred thousand dollars houses have been flying, but then when you look at the more expensive houses, they've been sitting there. That's not happening now either. No. Even the more expensive houses are flying off the market. And I wanted to kind of show you what was out there right now when it comes to the the nicer home, so to speak. And these are homes, believe it or not, that are getting offers within days. N normally, a situation reserved for the $250,000 house is happening even when we talk about houses in the millions. Hey, Shane, I know this is your listing here on, on Brentford Court. Where is this exactly? Yeah, it's in Keens Point okay. on one of the best cul-de-sacs in the community. The house sits on the water, uh, not the butler chamber, the beautiful kind of pond. Yeah. Uh, it was built by a PGA Tour player uh, about 20 years ago. And a uh, real nice guy. He's actually still a good friend of mine. He doesn't live there anymore. And he built this courtyard pool there for privacy. He did, you know, he was kind of a, I don't know, a celebrity at that time. Right. And uh, so the lot's absolutely amazing. We've probably got 10 showings the first day we put it on the market, wow. uh, negotiating two offers currently. Uh, it's time for an update on this home, but it's. I actually thought about buying it myself, to be honest. What is the list price right now on this one? One one nine. One one nine. Yeah. And the thing is, it, those of us that have grown up around real estate know one one nine means your payment's probably eight grand a month. But with the rates where they are, your payment's actually not going to be that much. Where I'm finding people can actually afford a little bit more house than generally they've always thought they can exactly. afford. I mean, on one one, P I T I. Let's say you get a three percent rate. What's your payment? Four or five, something like that. I yep. think. You know? I mean, I ran some numbers on a million dollar loan. It was like six grand a month. Or oh, yeah. Like P I T I yeah, H O A. Like in. I mean, just like but putting down like ten percent. I mean, right. it was like this is nuts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is the time. It yeah. really is. Yep. And a beautiful home and in a beautiful neighborhood too. Keens Point, great golf course. It's a, a yeah. great part of town, of course. Uh, but like I was telling, and if you'd like to see this house or any house, please call Shane right now. Four zero seven two zero five. Zero four zero zero. Great story on this next house, though, too. <laughs> Literally at the top of the market, which normally takes a while to sell places, 
You sold this one like two or three times I think, well, in, in a few days. You know, it just came to mind looking at this picture. So I did your very first show here. Yeah, sure did. We had that house on this show. Is that right? That's the one. I didn't and know that. And the market, this in Alworth, yeah. uh, who everyone knows, you know, Tiger Woods, Kill O'Neal, all those famous people. Sure. The market was dead in there. When I mean dead, you could not give a house away. Is that right? And that was and only they had a only years sold ago. over eighteen months. Sold one house on the water in there. That house wow. sat on the market for a year. Okay. <laughs> So anyway, we end up selling it in September for two point eight million. Mm. I just sold that house again last month for three point two million, with four backup offers all the way to three point five million. Is that right? Yes. It, Who are these people amazing. making offers of three million dollars on houses right now? Are these regular central so players? The, are these the buyer of are these the Brazilians? It's a mixture. So look at that closet. <laughs> Dude, Clark, close your eyes immediately. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to live in there and tie along yeah. with the deal. Just the one, I, yeah, the one closet's bedroom. bigger than my house. Uh, oh, yeah, so it's it's interesting. So the buyer of that home just now lived three doors down. Oh, okay. And they sold a smaller home. It was about 5,000 feet. This is 7,000. And they moved three doors down. Uh, but people are from everywhere. Uh, we're seeing international for sure, but mostly entrepreneurs yeah. from around the country that can work from anywhere they might keep their other home for a little while to kind of make sure they're in the right place and then they're put like that was a cash deal there then that he bought another 3.6 million dollar home that seller did mm-hmm. uh near bay hill and uh you know, he's another entrepreneur a lot of you know it's just some really interesting people we're dealing with Get that New York or California money, but live right here and do your meetings via Zoom in Central yeah. Florida. Well, there's, no no sticker, s- there's no sticker shock. No like, state this home would be six million. Yeah, exactly. Right. So exactly. they don't have any right. heartburn. Right. The they, they feel like they're money. taking advantage of the sellers on <laughs> us. It's a, yeah. such a great deal. Great job, guys. Dallas Lame, and you have mortgage. Shane Croft, Realtor to the Stars. Do you guys have time to stick around for the Real Estate Roundtable? Absolutely. Awesome. And without further ado, it's time for your portion of the show. It's the Real Estate Roundtable. Every Saturday, I answer your questions from throughout the week. All you have to do during the week is go to our Facebook page. You have real estate. Ask me a question right there. We just might answer it next week right here on the TV program. Let's start with Lee in Orlando. I have a 3.4% interest rate on my primary home. Should I look to refinance now? I would say yes. And the answer is, if that's a 30-year fix, there's no reason why you shouldn't go to a 15-year and maybe get one75 uh, save some of your payment might go up a little bit, might even stay the same. But even at that rate in the threes, you can definitely do better for yourself. I would say yes. Anthony in Marion County, thank you for watching. I love the show. I watch on clickorlando.com every week. Thank you, buddy. Uh, are these New Yorkers really moving here like I keep hearing about? I think Anthony's had enough New Yorkers already here. Is that happening? We've seen a lot of people from New York come down. They are. Uh, yeah. The Northeast in general, but lots of New Yorkers. We've met some great people, right? I mean, you know, all of a sudden people are like, oh, no. But we have just met some amazing people. They get here, and they love it. They can't believe how open and free Florida feels. Uh, Samantha in Orlando, I want to sell right now because this market is so hot. But then where do I live? What do you think, guys? It's a good question. I could, could you rent for a couple years? I mean, is that an option? What do you think? Well, there's there's not a single rental in our community. It's really? a thousand homes. Oh my Windermere goodness. only had like three available. Yeah. There's no market. Is the rental market still incredibly expensive? Yeah, it's it's just it's acting just like the housing market. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Dallas? What would you do? Would you sell in this hot market? What well, would you, you do? You know, that's that's an easy question to answer. If you, this is probably one of them, Shane, I think will bear this out as well. But I think right now it's a seller's market where you you can get the most money for the house you sell now, I think it's worth maybe a little inconvenience to try mm-hmm. to find a place. If you can walk away with enough money to bank and then take your time, find something else. But yes, it's going to be a little bit of an inconvenience, but the time to sell your home, let's say you're, you're in an equity position is mm-hmm. very strong. This is the best time to sell. And you may get, Shane, over asking price sure. for your home and bank that money. A little inconvenience, but I love it. maybe a good thing. Shane Croft, great job, buddy. Good to see you. Tell the family hello. I'm proud of the kids. Absolutely. If you want anything to do with real estate, whether it's selling or buying, give Shane a call. I'll connect you right now. 407-205-0400. And, of course, if you want to buy and you're not paying cash, you're going to have to get a mortgage. That is where Dallas Lehman comes in. Also standing by now to take your calls at 407-205-0400. Zero, zero, Dallas, thank you. Excellent job today, Pleasure. as thank always. You, thank you. I hope 
I hope we don't get the 5%. I hope I'm not right. I just have this weird feeling about, about you what and me sh- both, but we're going to watch it together. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Most importantly, thank you for joining us here today. If you're looking to sell your home, we could feature it right here on the show if you would like as well. Just reach out to me. I'd be happy to do it. Pre-approval. Buy, sell. I'm attorney Justin Clark, and we'll see you next week for You Have Real Estate. All right. Good job, boys. Great show, fellas. Oh, very nice. That flute.